This question appeared on a video about how to create recursive groups in tables in reporting services. The video focused on the basics of displaying these recursive groups, but Jarrah is more interested in how to create aggregations based on the data in the groups, such as counts, averages and sums. To demonstrate how to do this, we're going to use a different database compared to the movies one that we tend to use for our examples. So if you do want to follow along, you'll need to use the link in the video description to download a script file. You'll need to open up this script file in SQL Server Management Studio and then execute it to create a new database called Hogwarts with a single table in there called School. The school table contains a list of Harry Potter characters, as you can probably guess. And if we just take a quick look at the data that's contained in there, you can see that each person has their own unique member ID, but they also contain the ID of the person to whom they report, their parent ID. So you can see that these four people here report to ID number one, these three people report to ID number three, etc. Once you've got that data created, I've already started a brand new report, and I've done a couple of basic things here. So I've created a data source to connect to the Hogwarts database. I've created a data set called Wizards, which simply selects everything from the school table. And then I've created a basic report table that shows every single column from our Wizards data set. If we just quickly run the report at that stage, you can see we've got a list of all the people as shown in this list here in SQL Server Management Studio. At the moment, the report is showing the list of people based on the order they're stored in the underlying table. But we'd like to change that so that the data in the table is organized according to the hierarchy group information stored in the parent ID column. To do that, we can create a recursive group in the table. So back in the design view, we can right click on the existing details group in the row groups panel and choose to view the group properties. We can change the name of the group. Let's call this one people and then we can add a group expression to group on the member ID. Now, of course, because each member ID is unique in this table, this won't actually have much of an effect by itself, or indeed any effect at all. If we run the report, we'll see exactly the same results. To create the recursive group, we need to go back to the design view, right click on the people group and choose group properties. And then on the advanced page, we can set the recursive parent to be the parent ID field. At this point, if we click OK, we can run the report again, and now the data is organized according to the parent ID column rather than the original order they were stored in in the table. Now, although we've grouped the data in the table correctly, it's not immediately obvious at a glance that that's happened. So just to help our end user make sense of the organization of data in the table, I want to make a couple of small visual improvements. I want to change the indenting level of the text in the name cell according to the level of the hierarchy, and then maybe also the background color of the cells. To do both of these things, we need to rely on the level function to calculate the level of the hierarchy. Now we've covered this in quite a lot of detail in the original video, so I won't cover this in too much detail here, but just as a quick reminder, back in the design view, I'm going to right click on the cell containing the member ID field and then choose expression. And then I'm going to get rid of the reference to the value of that field and replace it with the level function. So level open and close some round brackets. If I then click OK and run the report, we'll see that we get the number indicating which level of the hierarchy each person belongs to. So now we can take that number and, for example, multiply it against a constant to increase the indent level of the name value in the name cell. So let's select that cell in the table. And then in the properties window, I'm going to find the indent category and I'll find the left indent property. Click on the drop down arrow there and choose expression. We can then create a calculation. I'm going to use the C string function, C S T R. And then in some round brackets, we're going to use the level function open and close some more round brackets and multiply that by a constant value, let's say 10. I can then close the round brackets and then concatenate that using the ampersand with the letters PT in some double quotes. So the end expression looks like so. If we then click OK and we run the report again, we should now see a different indent level for each bit of text according to the hierarchy level. Changing the background color of the cells is kind of similar using the level function. Back in the design view, I can highlight the entire row of cells there, and then I can find the background color property. Click on the drop down arrow next to that and choose expression. This is a slightly less or slightly more low tech solution, I suppose. I'm just going to check the three different possible values in this table. If the level is zero, one or two, give me different colors. 
So I'm going to use the switch function to do that. So equals switch, open some round brackets, and then the first logical test, I'm going to check if level equals zero, followed by a comma, then I'm going to pick cornflower blue as the color for that level. I can then type in another comma, and then I can say level equals one, and then I'll pick a different color for that. Let's go with light steel blue, and then another comma, and then for anything else, I'm going to use the constant value of true, and then I'm just going to make the background color no color or transparent. So we'll get three different colors for the rows based on what level of the hierarchy they belong to. I'll just tidy up a little bit here as well. I'm going to get the, uh, the name column increased in width a little bit. We don't really need to see the member ID column any longer, so let's delete that. And also let's delete the parent ID column. And then if we run the report again, that looks a little easier to read, I think. So onto the point of the video. How do we aggregate the data in these recursive groups? Let's start with a simple example. I want a new column that gives us the total exam score for all the students in the same house, and then at the top of the list for all the students in the school. Back in the design view, we can insert a new column into the table to the right hand side. And then if we just try the simple approach, if we use the field selector to choose the exam score field, that will provide us with a sum of the exam score. Because we've grouped our table, selecting a numeric field now provides a sum automatically. But that won't quite do what we want. If we run the report, we just basically get the exact same value as when we reference the exam score field. If we want to make this work so that the totals are calculated for each recursive parent, then back in the design view, we'll need to modify the expression in that cell. So I'm going to right click on that and choose expression. Then we'll need to provide two more arguments to the sum function. If you use the common functions category here in the, uh, in the expression builder and look in the aggregate category and then select the sum function, you might be able to make out down here that there are three different forms of using the sum function. The first one there is the simplest, where you just reference a field's value. The second one allows you to apply a scope to that field. And then the third one allows you to apply a scope and say that it's recursive. And that's the one that we need. So to make this work, we've got to type in a comma after the reference to the value and then pass in the name in some double quotes of the group. So I call my group people. So in some double quotes, type in the people group name followed by a comma and then the word recursive, not in double quotes. So the final expression looks like so. At that point, if we click OK and then run the report again, this time we'll get the values we wanted. One thing that's quite important to realize about aggregate functions in recursive groups is that the function includes any values on the current row. Now, because none of our staff members have any exam scores, that's not immediately obvious here. Really, these totals for the staff members are the totals for the students' exam scores in their group. But let's see what happens if we try to do the same thing with the spells column. I'm just going to head back to the design view and I'm just going to modify the column title here to say sum exam score. And then I'm just going to quickly cheat and I'm going to view the expression that I've used there. Copy that insert a new column into the table to the right hand side. And then I'm going to right click into that cell and choose expression and then paste in what I've just copied. I'll then just change the name of the field we're referencing here from exam score to spells. Then I can click OK. I'll give it a quick title. I'll say some spells. And then if we run the report, we'll see that this includes not just the number of spells for each individual student, as you can see here, it's also including the number of spells for the staff member as well. So adding up these three values by themselves, plus the number of spells for the staff member gives you the total. So what if you wanted to exclude the value for the current level of the hierarchy from the aggregate function? So basically we want to calculate the total number of spells, but only for the subordinates of any individual level. To do that, we can simply subtract the number of spells for the current level. If we head back to the design view, I'm going to right click and insert another new column. And then once again, I'm going to cheat by viewing the previous expression, copy it to the clipboard and click OK or cancel and then right click into the new column and choose expression and then paste in what we've just copied. From here, we can simply then say we want to subtract 
the value of the spells field from the result. We can then click OK. I'll just change the name of this so it's going to be called something like sum spells subordinates or four subordinates and then just change the column width a little bit. Maybe not. There we go. So that will do. And then if we run the report again, we should now see that the value for this column is the same as the total number of spells for everything minus the number of spells for just that level. If we're trying to show a total for the subordinates, it probably doesn't make sense to show a value for rows which don't have any subordinates. So in this case for the students. One way we could check if a row has any subordinates is to count the rows. So if we head back to the design view, let's just add an extra column. And I'm going to use a new function called count rows in the expression for this row. I'm going to say count rows, open and close some round brackets. So that's the most basic way you can use this function. Now if I click OK, the problem we're going to have initially is the same as we had with our sum function initially. The count rows function is counting how many rows are on this row. And there's only ever going to be one of those. So to make this look at the values in the recursive groups, back in the design view, we can edit that expression. And again, just looking at the common functions category and the aggregate category, the count rows function again shows you a few different ways of using the same function. So we're going to use the third option here. We're going to specify the group name and then state that that's recursive as well. So the group name, once again, is people, and that's written in some double quotes. And then the word recursive, not in double quotes. So the final expression looks like so. Having done that, we can click OK and then run the report. And now we can now see how many rows belong to each group. So you'll notice again that it includes the current row. So basically, when the count rows function returns one, that means that that row has no subordinates. So we can make use of that in our sum of spells for subordinates. Let's head back to the design view, and then we can just copy and paste that expression from the previous, uh, previous cell. So let's just quickly copy that, and then head back to the expression for the sum of spells for subordinates. And then we can wrap an if function around our existing sum. I'll give myself a couple of blank lines here and then begin my expression by saying if, that's I, I, F, open some round brackets. And then on the next line, paste in what I've just copied, count rows, people recursive, and check if that is equal to one. If that's true, on the next line, I'm going to say nothing. So don't display any value in that cell. Otherwise, show the value that I've calculated here with the sum minus the uh, the value for the current row. So the final expression looks like so. Having done that, we can click OK, run the report again, and now we'll see blank cells where there are no subordinate values. Next, what if we wanted to calculate a total for rows at a particular level of the hierarchy? So at the moment, our sum of spell subordinates for the top level is calculating the total number of spells for all students and all staff. What if we wanted to calculate just the total number of spells for students only? To do that, let's head back to the design view and we're going to replace the expression in this new column here. We'll get rid of the count rows function and build a new expression. So I'm going to do this from scratch. We'll use the sum function to calculate the sum of the spells field but only if the row is a student row. So we can do this in a couple of ways. If we say sum open some round brackets, and then on the next line, we can say IIF open some more round brackets. And then on the next line, we could ask, as we have a nice simple identifier field here for the type of person, we could refer to the type field and ask if that is equal to student. We could then type in a comma, and if that's true, we could reference the value of the spells field. So let's double click on that. Otherwise, we can use the value of nothing. We can then close the round brackets for the if function, type in a comma. Then we need to make sure that we're looking at the values, the sum for the recursive groups. So again, we'll need to place the name of the people group in some double quotes, followed by another comma, and then finally say recursive before we close the round brackets for the sum function. So it's a sum if function basically. Sum the results if the 
row is a student row, doing this recursively for the people group. So having done that, we can click OK. Let's just change the column name so it's some spells students. We'll change the column width a little bit. I think we'll get away with it this time. And then run the report again. And we should see a different result now. So this is the total number of spells for all students, excluding staff. This example worked quite easily because we had this handy identifier column for the type. If we didn't have this type column, we could still get the results for all the students just by using the level function instead. So back in the design view, let's right click on that previous expression and choose to view the expression builder. And then inside the if statement, rather than checking if the value of the field equals student, we can check if the level function is equal to the number two. So then we can click OK. Run the report again, and we'll see exactly the same results, just using the level function instead. The other aggregate function that Jared mentioned was average. So to do that, let's have a quick look at how to calculate the average exam score. This is basically the same as calculating the sum of the exam score for the recursive group, just using the AVG function instead. So in fact, let's cheat here. We'll go to the expression for the sum of the exam score, copy that to the clipboard, and then create a new column in the table. Right click into that new column and choose to view the expression, paste in what we've just copied, and then change the function name to AVG instead. Again, if you wanted to check in the common functions category, the aggregate category in there, the AVG function has the same three different forms. So we can click OK. Let's provide a quick title there. Let's call this AVG exam score. Change the column width a little bit. And I'll also change the number formatting for that cell so that it is formatted as a number and that'll give us two decimal places. Having done that, we can run the report and there we go. We'll get the average exam scores for each individual student, of course, which is the same as their exam score, but then also for all the students in the group and all the students in the school. It's important to remember, perhaps even more so for calculating averages, that aggregate functions in a recursive group include the value for the current row. As it happens again in the exam score column, none of the staff members have an exam score at all. They're all blank or null or nothing. So this average of 70 for Hufflepuff is calculated by adding up all the values in these four cells and then dividing the result by the number of values in those four cells. So it's essentially 210 divided by three because there are only three values there. Hence we get 70. So let's have a quick look at what happens when we do the same thing, but for the spells column instead. If we head back to the design view and then we insert a new column into the table, let's just copy the sum of spells expression. So we can grab a copy of that and then paste this into the expression and then just change the sum function to the AVG function instead. So we can then click OK. Let's call this AVG spells. Change the column width a little bit. Change the number formatting of the cell to a number so we get those two decimal places and then run the report again. So. This time, the average that we're getting here is the total of all the spells in these four cells divided by the number of values in those four cells. And there are four separate values there. So it's essentially two, so big pardon, 192 divided by four, we get 48. If we wanted to calculate the average number of spells for only students or people at level number two of the hierarchy, we can use the same technique we use for the sum of spells for students. So back in the design view, let's create a new column in the table. And then once again, we'll cheat and we'll copy the expression from that cell. So we'll grab the entire sum if combination and then right click into the new expression and then paste all that in. So all we need to do here is change the sum function again to the AVG function. All the rest of it remains exactly the same. We can test if either the level is equal to two or if the type field equals the word student. At that point, we can click OK, change the number formatting of that cell to a number, give it a quick column header. Let's call this AVG 
spells students and then change the column width again a little bit and then run the report and now we've got the average of spells for just the student rows. So what if we want to calculate the average for all the subordinates of each row? For the staff members for each house this will be the same result, it's the average number of spells for their students. But for the head of the entire school this will be the average number of spells for all of the subordinates, staff and students combined. This is a little trickier than calculating the sum of subordinates. Here we just calculated the sum of everything and subtracted the value for the current row and we can't take so simple approach for, a, for an average of course. So we'll start by calculating the sum of spells for all the subordinates and then divide that by a count of the values of that column minus one to exclude the current row. So to get started let's head back to the design view and I'm going to head into the expression for the sum of spell subordinates and I'm just going to copy the sum minus the current row expression to start with. So we'll copy that and click OK and then create a new column and then right click to build an expression and then paste in what we've just copied there. I'm then just going to close a set of round brackets around that part of the calculation and then I'm going to use a forward slash character to divide that by a count of the values in the spells field. Now earlier we used the count rows function and in this case we'd actually get away with using the count rows function. Every single row in this table has a value for the spells field. But if we wanted to exclude any nothings then we should use the count function rather than count rows. So the count function counts the number of values where the count rows function counts the number of rows. So quickest simplest thing to do here again I think is to copy the sum function and then in a set of round brackets I can change the sum function to count and then simply subtract one from the result to exclude the current row and then close the extra set of round brackets. So the final expression should look like this. So having done all that we can click OK. Once again we should change the formatting of that to a number so we only get two decimal places and then let's change this column name so it's average spells subordinates. Okay having done that we can run the report and our final column is created with the average number of spells for all of the subordinates for each row. If we want to exclude this not a number error this is generated of course because we're dividing the number of spells by the value of zero. So it's basically a divide by zero error. So let's get rid of that by using the same if function we used to exclude them here. Back in the design view I'm going to go back to the sum of spells subordinates, go to the expression, I'm just going to quickly copy and paste the if function. So if count rows equals one then use nothing and then go back to the new expression. I'll paste this in at the beginning so if count rows people recursive equals one then use nothing otherwise use the expression we've just created here so it's the sum of people minus the current spells value min uh, divided by the count of spells values minus one. We'll just need the final closed round brackets there so that's what the final expression should look like and having done that we can click OK and then run the report and there we go. So there we go, there's a bit about aggregating data in recursive groups in reporting services tables. Hopefully that's enough to answer the original question. Thanks very much for asking it. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.